Hello, I'm Eric, and I've been working with faculty to come up with more efficient ways to do model explainability. Well, what is model explainability? Let's start with what it isn't. Two years ago, Amazon developed a CV sorting tool that was later found out to be sexist and biased against terms like women's colleges or other feminine language. Now, had they used model explainability tools, they could have found this out before they deployed it. Now, this is very important because as we allow machine learning into more and more sectors of our lives, we have to understand what is what the machine is actually using to come to its conclusions. So model explainability is what will allow us and our models to be compliant with not just existing regulations, but also future regulations. Model explainability is what will allow the end user to trust the model and make more informed decisions. And finally, model explainability is what allows us to improve the model once we know which areas it is weak on. And this is why, regardless of which area you work on, you will be wanting to use model explainability in your work or product. So how does this work? Well, we have some data and this has some features. We pass these features to a model and it does impossibly many calculations that a human couldn't possibly hope to follow and then it spits out a prediction. Now in the case of Amazon, they could have some features of the CV and this would be to either pass the CV to a human or reject it outright. However, what we want to do is work backwards and figure out which of these features really contributed to this outcome. And to do this, we can borrow an idea from cooperative game theory. So this idea is termed Shapley values, and a Shapley value tells you how to fairly attribute value to each of the features based on their contribution to the outcome. And they have this very nice property that if you sum all of the values up, you get the accuracy of your prediction. Okay, well, we have an exact formula for it. How does it work in practice? Say you have three features. Well, we have to understand how all the features could possibly act in combination. So there are six combinations of three features that give six calculations to do. If we have 10 features, suddenly we have three and a half million different combinations of these 10 features. And if we go to 20, which is a fairly reasonable number for a data set, suddenly we have to do two followed by 18 zeros worth of calculations. Now, for a sense of scale of how large this number is, if a supercomputer were doing 1 billion calculations per second since the moment you were born, it would not give you the result until you reach the ripe old age of 75. So clearly this isn't feasible. And how we get around this problem is by using sampling. The idea that you don't need to probe every single possibility to get an accurate enough answer. Uh, however, when you have many features, this itself can still be a slow process. So my project focused on coming up with a more efficient algorithm to do this type of sampling. And um, for my algorithm, we tested this out on a handwritten digit recognition uh, neural network. So how the algorithm works is first, we divide the image up into blocks of pixels called superpixels. And then by doing this, we reduce the number of features significantly. We then want to find the importance of each of these superpixels. So we do the usual calculation and we get an image like so. The darker the red, the more important that superpixel was to the predicted outcome. We then want to zoom in and increase the resolution of the pixels, superpixels that we deem to be important and leave the other ones constant. And when we do that, we get an image like so. And what we learn is that the neural network that I designed uh, most strongly associates the empty space in, in the middle of the zero with the prediction of the zero. And to compare this, uh, my method on the right, with the standard approach in the middle, you'll see that qualitatively they are very, very similar with only a few discrepancies on the edges. Um, and this is very good because for a chosen error threshold, my model or my method performs this in less than half the time that the standard method uh, takes. And so what we can take from this is that my algorithm uh, can speed up the work in, more than, in less than half the time, and it maintains accuracy where it counts by sacrificing accuracy for the features that we don't care about. And so this can be the difference between you implementing these ideas in your work and you foregoing them completely. Thank you for listening.